Good evening. Welcome to the Community Recreation Commission meeting 224-2011. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everybody. All right, approval of tonight's agenda. I need a motion for um, approval. Do we have any additions, deletions, any kind of changes? If so, a motion would be nice. Motion made. We got John. Second, please. Bill. Third. Elena. <laughs> All those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion approved. Um, copies of the minutes dated January 27, 2011. Are there any changes needed, additions, deletions? Otherwise, I need a motion to approve, please. So moved. Bill, second Helena. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. All right, public comment for non-agenda items. Anybody from the public who would like to speak to the CRC on non-agenda items? Okay, moving forward, chairperson's report. The 2011-2015 Parks and Recreation Master Plan. It's the confirmed revisions from the public hearing. Um, we were supposed to submit this to the board a week and a half ago. Yes. A week and a half ago, we are going to do it now on the 28th, correct? Mine's working. Is your working? You were going before the board uh, Monday night? Okay. All right. My understanding is though we still don't have the final draft, or is it online now? Uh, it will be online tomorrow when it's out to the board and when Ted comes in. Okay. Any questions about the master plan from the commission? Any questions about the master plan, plan from the public? Okay. All right, so this should be, everything's going to go. Did you decide about what about the um, grants? Are you going to add those grants or no? Yeah, that was, that was the key. Uh, I thought there was a couple more that you still wanted to do maybe. No? There was a couple staffing. You know, but you're good, though? Nothing the commission and then getting some of the grant Okay. Right. All right, so we're all good. We've had some success over uh, bike path subcommittee or, you know, so over the years, it's a bottle for grants. Okay. Okay. All right, very good. All right, moving on. The West River Yacht and Cruising Club lease proposal. We want to have a discussion. We're asked by some board members to have a discussion on this item. Um, a couple things that were considerations that were brought internally that I want this commission to take. Um, into account. Here's some lists of things that were actually talked about about the lease, um, uh, the cruising club's lease proposal. Uh, number one, some marina patrons have expressed concern of proposal and the potential of losing their slip. We don't want any patrons to feel pressure because of such a proposal. Uh, number two, township has dockage has a dockage contract and commitment with each marina patron. Uh, number three. We allow current patrons to submit a dock reservation. Their past support is appreciated. Uh, contract is due on March 25th for all of the uh, docks. Uh, the marina patrons, this is more of a fact thing, is 35 residents and 17 non-residents. Um, it was noted that the commission should take it of the fact that the residents have a majority vo a voice to this. Um, we do not have consensus within the commission or the township board on the club's proposal. We want to make that clear. In the club's newsletter, it states that the W um, West River Yacht and Cruising Club is the best of both worlds to offer its members. So they do talk about the amen amenities of the clubhouse where they are not required to offset the cost of maintaining it. So s someone mentioned that it, it's good for us to know that really is a good factor for us over there. Water's Edge is, is something key because there is no monthly minimum that must be spent or work hours mandated by any club members. So it really is something unique, you know, for over there. And, I, and it, what's, it makes it more important to keep this bow club here. Um, right. The club, township, and restaurant operator can work together and continue the progress we have achieved over the past several years. <clears throat> Let's see. The previous township required that the club spend... And it was mentioned 7500 per year at the restaurant. Uh, township provides storage closets in the pro shop area. 
Over the past 20 years, water access has been one of the most desired recreational opportunities in the four master plans. Water's Edge provides the most promise because it is township owned. The township has struggled to gain consensus within the community on other public access sites. Uh, giving up partial control of the seawall and transient slips to a private club does impact the true spirit of public access. Uh, another point was when considering grant support, the MDNRE places a majority focus on public access and the facility is owned by a municipality or other public entity. In order to maintain trust with the MDNRE and MDEQ, the township would have to seek approval and obtain permits to install any new pylons. This takes time. Uh, project proposal has expanded over time from initially when it came uh, first discussions that, that was want to be brought up. And the club is a great partner, but this involves more than the commission and the club, be, uh, club coming to a long-term lease agreement. So these are some of the considerations that was brought forth to me to read. All right, with that said, any discussions or should we let Bob talk about what he wants to talk about first and we can discuss with that. Bob, you want to step up? Okay. Okay, yeah, I know uh, I didn't have a list of that. Otherwise, I might have been able to uh, respond to some of those uh, directly. But uh, we've had uh, a number of discussions uh, internally, and uh, uh, I, I think we've, we've kind of changed our whole approach. I know when we first uh, uh, discussed our whole project, we were looking at uh, uh, constructing a new pier for our uh, uh, club vessel, and uh, we were looking at uh, uh, leasing some of the uh, uh, the leasing some of the docks down there. Uh, at this point, we've kind of we've kind of changed our whole thinking because uh, there doesn't seem to be uh, uh, a consensus uh, at uh, uh, at uh, uh, across the aisle there uh, as far as what, what what we can do or, or how to approach this whole problem. So what what we're gonna, what we're looking at doing now is basically. Uh, we need a place to keep our boat, uh, our clubhouse boat is what we need. And uh, we think we can bring an, uh, an awful lot uh, to the facility uh, with our members. So basically at this point, uh, we, we basically need a, a place to dock our boat. And uh, we're still, uh, uh, well, some time ago, I think actually in 2002, we were designated as the official boat club uh, for that facility at Waters Edge. I think it was 2002. Uh, so. Uh, you know, we are a presence down there. We are the official uh, boat club down there. And uh, now we're asking that we have a, uh, a place to keep our clubhouse vessel. And uh, we're still going to, uh, <clears throat> we're not looking to lease anything other than a dock at this point. But uh, we're still going to um, provide some uh, improvements to the facility. Uh, some of these improvements are going to be, uh, we'll have to make, uh, we'll have to put a couple of piling in to uh, uh, accommodate our boat uh, at, at, at one of the docks, which is not, it really is more of a maintenance function uh, than anything else at this point. So we're going to make a little bit of improvement at the end of uh, uh, Pier 2 where we plan to uh, accommodate this vessel. Uh, we're also going to uh, expand the uh, boardwalk to the north, uh, at least over to Pier uh, 3. And um, we're also going to look at some landscape improvements uh, along the existing uh, marina walkway. Uh, we may very likely have to, uh, uh, on our own dime, uh, look at some electrical improvements uh, in order to uh, get additional power to our uh, club vessel. Uh, we may also have to uh, uh, do something with the uh, water supply down there in order to have uh, water uh, during the winter months. So we may have to actually do a, a water tap. This, of course, would be on our dime. We're not asking you to uh, uh, ante up for that. Um, so in any event, uh, and then, then also uh, we had talked about uh, that the club would act as the uh, dock master for the whole facility, coordinating transient dockage. We definitely want to be involved in that. Um, the, uh, uh, and then as, as uh, we talk a little bit about grants and uh, future opportunities, I do believe that uh, uh, Tim and I were talking in the hall earlier and uh, uh, there are definitely some grant opportunities available, particularly if there's a, a, a private partner. We do want to be the township's private partner down there at the marina. Uh, if there are grant opportunities available, we want to be a part of that and we want to be involved in any expansion talks or expansion uh, down there at the uh, at the marina. Um, 
the club also uh, plans on um, providing some additional services uh, uh, in addition to the uh, uh, improvements we're talking about, the um, uh, walkway and such. Uh, we also want to take on uh, taking care of some of the grass cutting down there. We'll, we'll take care of that. That uh, trash removal, we'll keep everything clear, uh, do that general maintenance on, on the facility, to, uh, put out the picnic tables in the spring, uh, take them up in the fall, that kind of thing, keep everything organized down there. And uh, so we would ask that uh, uh, in return for these uh, uh, for these uh, services that, that were provided, this goodwill and these services that we're providing, we're asking that uh, Dock 210 uh, be designated as the official dock uh, for the West River uh, Clubhouse vessel. Uh, dock 2, I don't know if you still have your uh, color chart. Just and, and that was, just, it would be basically, what are you saying, Pier 1 you and 2? Let me give you guys a copy of this. Okay. Because okay. I'm not familiar with the numbers. Yeah, the fire red boat is the uh, club boat that uh, we're talking about uh, at this point. Um, See, I, I, I told my guy at the office, I says, you know what, because the last picture, it didn't have, you, you lost the boat in the water. I says, you know, Shane, I says, you need to give that boat a little bit of punch. So uh, he made it look like it's on fire. So I guess that uh, that's the punch we're looking for. All right. But, what, uh, what's the numbers going to you want to designate again, please? So where the, where the, where the boat is uh, at the end of Pier 2, that dock, which is 210, Pier 2 Dock 10, okay. that would be designated as the official uh, dock okay. for the uh, West River uh, Club vessel. Um, okay. but, um, I'm sorry, Bob. You're just referring, though, to that... Um, that one dot, not the pier. No, not the what pier. We, no. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go a little bit farther and uh, uh, would ask that, uh, in addition to that dock, that, uh, and we're not, we're not looking for uh, uh, control of any docks, other than we would ask that um, the, the, that the docks on piers one and two, we might have to discuss this a bit, but we would ask that the, that the docks on piers one and two be designated as uh, uh, for, for club members uh, only. And this would be something that we would have to coordinate with Tim, uh, when, uh, Tim and uh, the uh, rec office when they go to uh, uh, allocate docks. Right now we have uh, a majority of uh, the dock holders, at least on Pier 1, are already members of our club. Uh, we would just like to reinforce that. And uh, the reason for that is that uh, as uh, uh, the activities in the marina grow and uh, we have regattas and rendezvous down there, uh, that if we're going to uh, inconvenience, if we're going to inconvenience somebody, uh, we would rather inconvenience our members rather than inconvenience somebody that's just a dock holder down there, uh, you know, to tell them, hey, you can't go out this weekend because uh, we're going to have you blocked in uh, with some boats that are uh, rafted off. Yeah, and the other thing, too, is uh, if, if we can't, uh, I mean, if you don't want to designate those uh, docks as being, uh, uh, designate those docks for uh, West River members only, uh, we could basically gobble those up by attrition. In other words, right now we're already holding 90% uh, of the uh, uh, 90 percent of the folks on Pier 1 are already uh, West River members, and uh, on Pier 2, nobody on Pier 2 is. Now, I did, I know there was a comment earlier uh, about uh, there was some concern from some folks. I'm not sure uh, how many folks uh, called the office. One. And of everybody that I called, there's basically 37 docks available. I've talked to, um, let me see, uh, I think I've talked to 30, uh, about 33, 32 or 33 people. Everybody of those 33 people I talked to said, yes, Bob, we don't have any problem joining your club uh, to make this happen. One person said no, and I guess that Tim was telling me that that's the one uh, person that called the office and said that they they would not be willing to join the club. And uh, I said, okay, well that's uh, you know that's that's what it is. That's what it is. And uh, like we just said, we can gobble that that dock up uh, over attrition uh, next few years, whatever. The that's why I noted the individual contract with each dock, and they have the option to renew each year. So that's. 
Yeah. Well, because it makes sense. I mean, remember when we went through the whole thing with the um, jack stands down there? That was a long, long way to go. If people remember, Bill, how that was. I mean, it took a long time to initiate that. So that it definitely down there, the boat people take time to adjust to anything new. Yeah, but uh, I mean, the only person, um, and actually I didn't call this gentleman, but the only person that we're actually going to um, displace, if that's the right word, would be the fellow in dock 210 at this point in time. But there are other docks that are available that will easily accommodate that boat uh, uh, either uh, on Pier 2. There are, uh, I believe there's a dock available on Pier 2. Uh, I'm going to meet with Kathy here in the next couple of weeks and we're going to go over exactly that. Uh, there's a, a dock on Pier 2 uh, and there's also uh, a dock, uh, the end dock on Pier 4 is available that would be uh, comparable to the uh, dock 210 on the end of uh, up here too, uh, the end of Pier 4 is available, uh, which is a comparable uh, uh, slip for this boat that, that, that we're going to displace. So I don't anticipate uh, any uh, serious aggravation uh, uh, with that fellow, although I must admit I, didn't, I have not spoken to him because I didn't have a valid uh, phone number and I was out of town today and I, I, I just, didn't, just simply did not have time to talk to him. But I do... I well, that's that. not the same person. There was another individual also. Right, there was someone else, yeah. Uh, no, no. I mean, Bob, Bob's talking about displacing where this orange would be. That right, no, I understand uh, that. Yes. Yeah, that, that guy, I did not talk to the man that's, that holds Dock 10 right now. But we do have other docks available for that boat that he will easily slip into. Uh, <laughs> He will easily slip into it. It's, it's not a problem. I mean, it's just it's an equivalent dock, so it's not like uh, the, that. He has, I think, his boat is 44 feet. Uh, we're not going to put him in a 22 foot well. I mean, he's going to be in a in, in the same size well, uh, same accommodations. I mean, it's not like uh, we're going to be uh, giving him the boat. Uh, now, um, remind the commission here now. Um, you don't have the boat yet, though, right? You still got to take it out for that uh, test voyage or something like yeah. that yet, or something like that, right? When's that going to take place? I mean, well, we're waiting for the weather. Uh, quite right. frankly, we've got to, uh, we have the weather has to be accommodating. Uh, so we're going to do a sea trial and a uh, survey is our next uh, is our next is the next phase for us. Uh, we uh, the other day uh, there's a, a number of contingencies that, that that we have for purchasing this vessel. Uh, one of the contingencies, the main contingency, uh, is we need uh, our membership approval. That vote took place this past Monday. Uh, it was unanimously approved by our membership uh, to uh, proceed with the purchase of the vessel. The next big commitment is really finding a place to moor the, the boat. And uh, we are the official club at Water's Edge. We want to keep the vessel at Water's Edge. And uh, we're here asking you guys at this point, we've taken all the least thing out of it, uh, all we're asking now is that you would uh, allocate that dock at the end of Pier 2, that that would become the club vessel, uh, the club dock for our, for our uh, clubhouse vessel, and uh, that the, uh, um, uh, that the uh, uh, rate for that dock basically would be offset by the goodwill and the services that we're providing uh, at, 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 the, uh, at the marina. And then uh, uh, we will continue to uh, push uh, the folks in uh, Piers 1 and 2 to uh, uh, become members. Uh, I think it's important for us to uh, uh, function as a, as, a, as a boat club. We need to have uh, um, all that camaraderie uh, of everybody down there to make the whole thing uh, happen like it should. Uh, so, uh, and, and I think once we get the, the vessel down there that uh, uh, you're going to see a lot of people jumping on the bandwagon to uh, uh, be, be, be a part of our group. All right. uh, and, and, I, and there was one other other thing too that I uh, forgot to mention that, uh, uh, and, and it goes without saying. I mean, the Marina Boardwalk and, and all the grounds uh, within the Marina, they're going to continue to be uh, open to the general public and designated as public uh, access. We're not changing that uh, any, any any bit at all. And uh, as far as access to the piers, it's always been access to the piers has been limited to dock holders and their guests only. So we're not changing the public access 
uh, end of things whatsoever. <laughs> all we're here now is uh, we've taken all the least thing off the table. <clears throat> we're here before this group. We're asking you to give us that doc for these services that we're going to be providing. And at that point, then, our next commitment is to uh, uh, do our sea trial. Because uh, if we can't have a place to keep the boat, there's no sense in getting a sea trial because we're not going to buy the boat if we don't have a place to keep it. Right. Uh, so if we can get a place to keep it, then we're going to uh, make arrangements to do our uh, sea trial and survey. And uh, we should have uh, that club vessel down here in the uh, next couple of months. All right. Thanks, Bob. Well, I'd like to say that I like the idea of the boat being down there. I like the idea of not leasing the piers. I think it's really good. Um, and I'd like this commission to consider that, you know, when we look at the different rec properties, we should support the pool, the golf, you know, the restaurant stuff. But when, when did we last try to support the marina and try to increase, you know, I don't know, people there or involvement down there? So um, we're just talking about leasing this slip, so it sound, sounds pretty good to me. I mean, any other discussions or questions for Bob? Anyway, John? What are the, uh, the uses? Oh, I'm sorry. What, what are the uses, again, going to be on the clubhouse vessel? Uh, basically, we're going to uh, uh, get a club liquor license. Uh, we're not going to be looking at uh, opening a restaurant or anything, so there's no... Uh, I mean, we're going to be looking for somebody to provide us with food as, as we uh, decide we need uh, food and uh, to cater certain functions. We're going to be looking for uh, outside uh, uh, folks to uh, provide us with that kind of service. Does and, that answer your question? Well, and <clears throat> if you have that, those services on that boat, just your club members will be using? That yes, for the boat them? is not open to the general public. I mean, that's, no. I think that's where uh, there's been a lot of concern and uh, misunderstanding. I mean, the, the folks that we're catering to, I mean, our club right now has just short of 70 members. That's the group we're talking about, uh -huh. our members only, and, and, and their guests, but it's not like each member is going to bring 700 guests. I mean, it's, uh, we're basically catering to 100 people is what, we're, is, we're, is what we're doing, and we are not open to the general public. If you come down there and uh, want to come on board the boat for a, uh, for a drink, okay. you'll have to ante up 290 bucks. And we'll give you a membership and a beer. <laughs> First no, I'm kidding. I'd probably, I'd probably let you come on the boat. But, uh, That's a high but, uh, like, it's, it's really members only. All it's right. really members only. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Uta? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I do have some questions. I, I really like the scaling down of the, of the entire proposal. I, I do think it kind of escalated. Uh, pretty quickly. Um, personally, I guess I don't have a problem with uh, leasing out the, the dock space. I think I agree with Walt. It's very exciting to have an elegant, uh, you know, paddle boat, steamer, whatever, um, park there. Uh, so on that end, I think that's really nice and really exciting. Um, where, where I start having concerns, Bob, and, and your group is the, the other steps and so becoming the official club is is one thing but having the official peer and so forth uh, we still have to maintain this as a as a public facility and one of the one of the advantages of a public facility is that if you lease a space there uh, you have no obligation to join a club you have no fees you know you just pay for your dock space and anything else you want you you pay for as you go. You want to play golf, you pay as you go. You want to use the pool, pay as you go. That was one of the things that, one of the reasons we took it out of being an enterprise. Um, so while I think it's exciting to have the, the boat there, any kind of reorganizing of the marina and so forth, I would imagine that that's something that needs to be negotiated with Tim and with... But, but we're with not going to reorganize the marina whatsoever. We're just looking at leasing that one dock. Right. So, but you're, you were talking about rearranging boats to get more people into Pier 2. And, um, I mean, I, and maybe it's just your style of talking, but, you know, we're going to push membership. We're going to gobble up by attrition and so forth. It, I don't want public lease patrons of our marina to feel any pressure 
that they have to join a club to keep their boat at Pier 1 or Pier 2. And I'm thinking if you have concerns about uh, that your events might impinge upon the, the other tenants on Pier 2, that we, work, that we have you work specifically with Tim to arrange the, the lease, the, um, the boat slips, et cetera, um, maybe it's feasible that your club take over Pier 2 and 3 and we lease out completely Pier 1. I mean, I want, I want to hear that that's all still open to negotiation. Well, we're not, we're not talking about no leasing. There's going to be, he, what he's looking for is the word right. designation. Right. So we still, right, right, right. I, But I, I think designation is that, is that foothold. Right. And it might it might seem restrictive to the to the public tenants. If you guys have a problem with that, then take the word. Just, uh, I mean, I'm I just I'm just making my plea right. that this is the way we would like to see it. Right. If you don't want to see it that way, then the bottom line is we need a place to keep the boat. We want that dock to uh, Pier Two Dock Ten, and we want that for the services that okay. we're going to provide. And, and I understand that, Bob. And that's why I said I'm I'm hoping that all these things are going to be negotiated, not right here, right now, but ultimately um, with our, our um, manager and our township manager. And and just for the for the commission, while I like the idea of um, trading goodwill for dockage, on the other hand, I I don't know if that's necessarily an, the right way for us to go in terms of how do we value your, your goodwill gestures versus value of the dock. And, and obviously that's just my opinion and I'm sure we can come to some sort of an agreement but in the past we've always had issues that maybe the township thinks um, goodwill services are worth one thing and the person providing them thinks they're worth something else. So if we do go down that road, you know, we need to be really careful that we stick real amounts onto those things. And, and it might just be maybe easier or cleaner if we come up with an agreement that, okay, you're going to do these services, we'll pay you to do these services, and you want to lease the dock, now you pay us for the dock, and it ends up being a wash, but at least we've designated a total and a value to those things. That's something and it's that out there in the open. It's right? out there in the open, and there's no questions about you know what a, what what value is, and that's something that um, the supervisor keeps bringing up is you know make mm -hmm. sure that the value is is mm -hmm. properly represented. So I I I just want us to consider that. Well, I think it's really great you're offering those things that when we go into that negotiation that we really do peg a real value on there. And, and trust me, I know there is a real value there. I'm not saying that it's not valuable. I just think we need to document what that value is so that it's on the record yeah. and everybody knows that it's a fair deal. Yeah, that's, and, and uh, I mean, that's, uh, that's, that's a workable solution as well. I mean, it's, uh, that's, uh, it that's just fine. keeps it straight and simple. You know, it, it's kind of, as, as Paige knows, kind of what we've tried to do with, um, with the equestrian center is they're now on a, a sort of straight lease yeah. agreement. Well, there are some, I think there are some that feel that uh, this whole arrangement uh, that, that we're trying to uh, uh, work the boat in there where, uh, uh, all of a sudden it's going to be a uh, profit center or a money maker for, for our club. That's absolutely not the case. We're not trying to do any of this uh, to uh, uh, generate dock income for ourselves. I mean, that, that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to function as a boat club is what we're trying to do. And, and you're doing it within a public facility, and so we have to attach some strings just to make sure that that, that, that balance mm -hmm. is there and that the, the public still has its access, still has its, is va it's getting its value for giving up that pier. Well, so nobody's, nobody's uh, taken over the pier. I mean, no. it's not like the, the pier comes out, is out of the equation. That pier is still accessible to all those boat owners, whether they're a member of the club or they're not a member of the club. Whoever is leasing the dock, running the dock, uh, certainly that pier is uh, uh, available to them. I mean, we're not going to... Uh, we're not changing that uh, whatsoever. Okay. Well, I, I think when you use the word designate as, it has that implication of, um, of ownership or at least possession that, um, you know, yeah. like the, the um, picnic area off of Pier 1. 
I know there have been instances where, where the public has tried to just even step on it and have been told that, that it belongs to the club. So that's designated, but you pretty much have to go by that to get on the pier. So you want, I, I think we just want to be careful that, <clears throat> that, the, that the club has what it needs, mm -hmm. but that the public also has what it needs, and that there isn't a clash yeah. between this is now, you have to be a member to be here, but you don't have to be a member to be here. Yeah. Again, it's just the finding that balance. Yeah. Ethel, you got any questions? Well, I agree with, with Uta that it has to be, I'm sorry, I agree with Uta it has to be defi definitely one way out of the, because people are going to think we are giving you the space for that boat mm -hmm. and that they can't come down there. So what she's saying about equal value for equal value, mm -hmm. if it's put right in dollars and cents, that's, well, that's, going to keep the, that's going to keep the public from backlash. Yep, that's that's fine. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're we're okay with that. I, uh, uh, I I know we can sell that to our uh, our committee and our, our club. I, I know they won't have. Well, I mean, we want to make this comfortable for you too. It, it's not just uh, you know people always say that we are always adding strings or layers or bureaucracy, but we just need to make sure that when when you rent that dock, that you're comfortable there and that there aren't these. Uh, issues that you have to deal with and that there aren't these issues that we have to deal with. Bill, you got any questions? Yeah, I, I just can't believe some of the stuff that we can make more mountains out of molehills than I've ever seen. But the question is, the public are not accessible to that boat, whether you get the dock or not. I mean, they can't go on those docks. It's the public facility, but the public are not allowed to go on those docks, I don't care what docks, that's, that's, unless that's, they are a member, that's the way it is now, or a guest. Mr. Period. Bill, can I clarify? I'm, when we talk about public access, we're not talking about the public having access to the docks. We're talking about the public having access to rent a slip without having to be a member of a club. That's so right. that there, you know, anybody can rent a slip there, whether they're from Grosseal or from Trenton, and they don't have to join the club. We've already talked about that. I, the point is that he's asking. But we're not saying that the public should have access to the piers um, or to walk up to your boat. That's not where I'm coming from. I don't think anyone here has said that. Okay, well, where I'm coming from is his first uh, question to us to consider is allowing their club to have Doc 210. Correct. And that's the question at hand. All the rest of it has to be worked out in final detail with Tim, the boat club, the members. All of that will happen. What they're trying to do is to get us to say, yes, okay, you can have 210. They can go buy the boat because they've got a place to put it. The rest is going to have to be negotiated, which it doesn't have to go tonight. What needs to happen tonight or at a very near meeting is that we say yay or nay to allowing them to have Doc 210, period. That, that we don't need to attach all the strings that you said are not attaching. This is not what we're here tonight to talk about. No, I think, I think everyone was just making <coughs> points because of um, a Bob going through his list of things. Because right. he I, did talk about more than just 210. Right. I mean, I, so I, I want, it's really just a discussion. Really? I, mean, I want everybody to understand that we're that we're looking for more than just a place to keep the boat. But we want to be involved down at the river. Uh, we want to we want to take part in, in in all the activities. We want to be a part of the the improvement process. We want to help things happen down there. I mean, if you don't want us to do nothing, no. then just tell us. We'll only rent the dock. This is where the grass grows seven feet high, because that's what we want. What was good about what you said and what questions could be asked from us, it's good for the public to know what's going on, too, the discussions that we're having out here, so that they know and have an idea of what's going on, that we don't just sit there, okay, he had 210, and no one knows what's going to happen from, yeah. from then on, yeah. you know, really. So yeah. well, your point's well taken. That's exactly what I'd like to have happen is that uh, we know we have a place to keep the boat, and then we can sit down with Tim and uh, draw up, you know, just we've been right. talking about uh, offset the, the, the price and that and uh, come up with a uh, uh, equitable solution for that. But the, the, the immediate thing at hand really is 
we need a place to keep the boat. You know, I mean, I've been working on a place to keep the boat since October. I mean, I'm almost six months into it. I mean, it's it's uh, like we need a place to keep the boat. Right. Ellen, you got any, any comments or questions? I like the new plan. Good. And I, I have to agree with Ute that it has to be clear what you exchange because if you have people that want to do volunteer stuff too, they have to be recognized for doing their volunteer stuff that it's not in exchange. Do you understand what I mean? The dollars and cents, what you exchange right. for your thing is clear right. to right. the public. Right. But I, I like the new plan. Mike, you have any comments or questions? Mr. Chairman, I'm ready to make a motion. Mr. Motion. <laughs> what, what, what is your motion, sir? That this Recre Recreation Commission agree to lease Dock 10 to the West River Yacht and Cruising Club for their floating clubhouse, subject to negotiation of dock lease and club services provided on an equal value. Second. Do you have it written down? Yeah, he's reading. Can I have <laughs> it? I just scribbled that about a minute ago. Can I have it? <laughs> You, you can. You have discuss after a second. We'll have, have second. discussion. Uh, <laughs> well, I think Bill seconded. Walt. Oh. Okay, Bill seconded. Or John. Yeah. Walt. Can I? No, Walt. Hang on. Tim, yes, sir, Tim. Um, I have a commitment to each of those dock holders that have contracts. They have till March 25th. There's somebody that has that dock. I oh. owe it to each and individual member. That club supported the heck out of the marina, but I still have. A commitment to each dock holder down there, and I would not do that tonight. That be my. Per I have nothing against what the club's proposing, and we're also going to be going into negotiation with another operation there, um, where a lease is coming to the end, and that involves. That gets pretty tricky, and so I think we, we can't, we can't our, jump ahead. We, we lease our slips till March 25th, is what you're saying? They have till March 25th to renew their slip, okay. to pay their right. bill. So it's called for right now, is what you're saying. We, I have a commitment to each, each one of them as yeah. a dock holder right. and the people that aren't here. Um, I, I just I, I can't break those commitments right. at this time. You know, we wouldn't have any trust in the marina with the other uh, dock holders, and we also have another operation there that could be affected by um, some. Can, can I? Can I? Can I, I mean, There's no offense because Bob makes that marina run, mm -hmm. but I do have commitments to each one of those dock holders. Well, let me say this. I mean, that, th this is the dock that we want. I mean, and uh, I, I know that it's going to come down. I'm going to end up making that phone call and talk to that, that, that gentleman. I did want to do that before tonight, but uh, like I said, I was out of town, so I couldn't, I couldn't make that happen. But uh, I still think that the, the motion on the floor could be voted on, and uh, in the event that that fellow is, is, is not willing to uh, uh, move his dock or, or, or change the location of his boat, uh, then we would have to uh, sit down with him and say, okay, well, what, what else is available for us uh, for, 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 for this year? Um, Mr. Chair? Yes, Mr. Chair. I, I'm not a lawyer, um, but I'm wondering, we have a motion on the table to negotiate a, a lease for that dock space, and, and it really should say 210. Um, can we... Can we make uh, an amendment to that motion to say contingent on approval by current dock holder? Or just subject to availability. There you go. Either way you want to. If I add three words to my motions, uh, dock 210, comma, subject to availability, comma. That, that would work. What do you think, Tim? Does that protect you? I mean, obviously, it would have. we should have heard that before a motion was right. made. Yeah. But, um, because I'm still confused about why we would, uh, why wouldn't it expire once they pull the the boat out of the water? Why wouldn't it? It's the way it's been done. It's in the rules. It's the way we've operated over the, over the years. Um, you know, we're we're making so we'll look revisions. What that does, what that, what, excuse me, what, what it does is it. I think the mechanism it was put in place to give the dock holder who who held the dock in 2010 the. Uh, I'm forgetting the word. The security of knowing that if he wants to renew, he's got to renew it by March. See, ours is uh, coming up by March. Over at our club, it's it's uh, uh, the 15th of February. So yeah, every club has a different. Yeah, it's the same thing. But that's why that's in there, and 
and uh, again, things could change. It could be because of the economy, we could lose a lot of dockage. Hopefully we won't. Right, and um, if I could add one more thing in it. And I appreciate the club support. I like the idea. Um, also a definition of what a guest is going in onto the boat because the restaurant also has liquor sales and beverage sales that they rely heavily on, and we have to think about that. Um, we've always been able to work together, and I know this is something new and exciting, but we don't want to put uh, another operation in a bad situation without discussing it and just going ahead and doing it. I know Bob's been patient for six months, but I, I, I've received correspondence from people higher above me that aren't real excited about but it. But we're I, not I, talking about a liquor license, are we? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're voting on just a slip, right? The liquor license is between... But there, there would be a boat with, with guests able to go on it. I think you, it's nothing against the club. I just I think we have to look at all aspects of this. I would hate to see one operation shut down and then the whole thing cave in. I you know I went through the process the last time. It took like four or five different groups to meet with over and over, and the demands that they wanted to run the restaurant operation and people that would work with us. So there's so many things. And it's the same with the club. You don't want to turn them off because they're vital to the. But I don't think we can just say you can put the boat. I mean, I think somebody like Dale needs to get involved with that along with me and then maybe bring some other parties together because I, I'm really worried about the overall operation. If one part of that goes, the whole thing could go. It's that touchy. And, but, but we need everybody. That's the problem. It's a rock and a hard place. What do you do? You, I need, I need the, the club. I need all those individual boat uh, patrons on all those other docks. We need that restaurant to pay the utilities. Um, I'm very concerned. I think we can work together. Well, but I don't think what we're there. you need the what for utilities? What'd you say? We need that. It's more than just the utilities. That brings money in. That brings the restaurant brings golfers. Um, Kathy had written a little report for the golf subcommittee where when it when we lost the tent operation years ago, we, recreation department wasn't there. We had several leagues leave Waters Edge or a couple of them at least. So this could be a chain reaction. That's why we all got to work together, and I, I think we can. And I don't know. These guys have helped me. I've worked with them. It's just I'm very worried about if one part of it goes down, then we're cooked. And we've worked so hard over the last five years or six years now. So I, I don't know. It's, it's just a rock and hard place. Tough, tough call here because everybody means well. Uta? Well, I, I, I want to go back to the, to the motion that we have. Um, we probably have a couple of options, and one is we can we can vote on the op on the on the motion and uh, either vote it up or down. Uh, if it gets voted up, it's really just a, a CRC recommendation uh, to the township board, and so the the broader discussion might need to take place at the township board. Um, and that's where some of this uh, that Tim is talking about is coming from, worry about <coughs> the, the bigger picture of the, the leases. Correct. Um, secondly, we can vote down the motion and have a new motion that lays things out in a different manner that we can perhaps imply support for this dockage but leave contingencies in the motion that give Tim the room to iron out the issues that he has. So that basically saying we intend to make room for that boat on the dock, but it has to be based on X, Y, and Z. I, I think all I'm trying to do is lay out a path for us to follow at this point. It, I mean, it's they, never easy. The commission, what's the concept of it? It's just what, the, what, what can happen after that if we make it uh, definite. So what, what, what essentially, I think what Tim is saying, and, and for, you know, Go ahead. correct I, me if I'm wrong, yeah. is that it's not as simple as just giving permission to place a, a boat on the dock because it's going to serve as a clubhouse. You have concerns that it's going to affect individual other boat, activities. Uh, individual patrons within the marina um, care deeply about the club that helps keep the marina up. Uh, care deeply about the rec restaurant and all that, that they do and work on to try to help help the whole thing, you know, service the golfers, the pool, uh, the marina, that type of thing. It's just, um, I'm just worried about it a little bit. I, I, I would hate to see the operation 
fail at this point after everybody everybody's worked together so hard. But I, I know it's, it's just I wish I had the answer. Um, it's the concept's good, but maybe Dale and I need to sit down and get together with Bob and some of the other parties and work it out that way. You know, maybe go door to door and you know sort this out and bring people together because I think it can work. It just we got to get everybody on the same page, otherwise it's going to explode on us. I've seen that in so many other, not necessarily with our department, but almost the, like agreements with the groups or whatever. So yeah, I think you've got to work through it that way because there's such passion from mm -hmm. all all sides. So th th there's a possibility that a can, we, can we make a motion of support toward this goal and then uh, have you do that research and move on? I mean, this is where the proposal started six months ago, yeah. and, and then it grew and it grew and it grew, and I think that's what, what caused a lot of delay and consternation. But it's back to where, you know, where it's a good starting point for us, but we still have these right. other issues that need to be ironed out. So, uh, do you hear that deep sigh? <laughs> I'm at a loss now. Um, can I address the motion? I mean, yes. We have discussion. It's my understanding that this commission is part of the overall township organization, but the township board sets policy. We make recommendations. Right. Like we've just worked on a five-year plan, but it has to be approved by the township board. Correct. With that in mind, and wanting this commission to continue to move on to bigger and better things, I'd like to see us vote on the motion and at least keep it moving. Maybe we get it off our plate. It goes on to the board, township board's plate, or it stays on my plate because I'm the subcommittee of the, of the marina because there's still a lot of work to be done. Yeah, the township board um, about a year ago made the entire facility public, and what that did with the state of Michigan, it took seventy thousand off our, you know, debt every single year that through depreciation that we'd have to put on our books, and that's helped out greatly this year. So there's all these tricky angles, and I would need some guidance with Dale, the township manager, and just knowing all the different parties. I think the 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 boat idea is wonderful, but it just and we all have to work together, but this, there's so many little things that could really cave in at this point. And I think I need to work with Dale and sort it out with him and then maybe meet up with uh, Bob again and come back. Right, but, but I don't want to like hold him up saying, though, I mean, We've been stuck. I know. We've been stuck here. We have yet to move it forward. Maybe this is the nudge that we need to, to progress it to get it in the next layer of the onion here, right? To go into the details, right? Could I have one comment from uh, one of our uh, committee people? Um, could, could I? Sure, could I uh, wait, we all done discussing on our in here? Anyone else got any more questions? Just a second. I, I don't want to see us lose uh, Sharkies. And, I, and I, from what I hear Tim uh, act speaking like, that's going to be a great risk. And that's something we don't want to. We want to be nurturing and trying to get Sharkies more business and not uh, putting them at risk any more than they are now. That's just that's the feeling I'm getting, uh, and I, I think I'm feeling what Tim is feeling as well about that. So that's what I want to say. Right, and I I agree with that, but I, we can't we cannot not support one area though too. You know, that's right. You know, to to if if we have a a group and we're talking about the marina that wants to grow and expand, have more more exposure and stuff like that. What's the bad thing with that? With more pe more people down in the marina enjoying people who go there. There ain't gonna be no food there. They're gonna be guests. They're gonna have to eat at Sharky's. You know, so there possibly could be an upside too. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, we're gonna be bringing, we just can't be looking at negatives all the time. We're gonna be bringing people to the marina. I mean, we've already been contacted by two outside clubs. Uh, they want to bring down uh, in June. They were bringing down like I, I don't have my notes here. I think either five or six boats. They were talking about twenty-five to thirty-five people uh, for a weekend uh, function down there at, at, at the river. So we're trying to get that coordinated. Then we were contacted by another uh, organization. They wanted to bring uh, nine or ten boats and a possible five or six more boats. Uh, I had to actually shut them down because these were too, the boats were too big and we couldn't accommodate them. That's what I was talking about. Uh, if we had members only at those piers one and two for a weekend, you see, we could uh, we could uh, tie up uh, or. or or we could jockey our, our members say, hey, you, you can't move your boat this weekend because we're going to have some folks rafted off. So for that group, I had to tell them, you know what, we can't, we can't accommodate 
you this year because we don't have we don't have space to put uh, the number of boats that you're talking about because they, they were talking about but uh, the nine space that you do have you want to have it festival but like Tim says it would be good to get a communication with yeah. Brian to tell him that the possibility you know, of having having events which would bring more people exactly. and they you know right I mean come on you know we're going to bring people to the to, right. to the marina yeah and it could be okay. good for the golf it yeah. could be good for the pool it could be good for sharkies right. and we just want exactly. communication to bring everyone together and tell everybody the good things that can happen. One of our committee guys wants to make a comment. Uh, Norm Krolstrand, if you could uh, okay, take Norm. the podium. Thanks, Walt. Thanks, Norm. Norm, can you spell your last name, please? Uh, Norm Krolstrand, K O H L S T R A N D, uh, 34100 Willow, New Boston. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's a public marina, <laughs> public access. Uh, means just as was described that means that the public can come in and lease a dock or lease a slip and basically that's what we are okay we're an entity we have a lot of familiarity we, we've had this designation as the official uh, yacht club of the uh, of water's edge but in reality we are a public entity and that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to go about it the right way and make all the all the, the gears mesh and make everything work. But when you blow away all the fat, what we're trying to do is lease a dock. Um, and that we've been working at this for six months. Uh, Mr. Rooney, you know that. Uh, and there's never been any... Uh, What's the new word? Transparency. It's always been there. We're a club. We're a boat club. And uh, there's never been any question that when we uh, locate this floating clubhouse, uh, and we're in the process of doing it now, is seeking a liquor license, a club license. We, um, there's a lot of animosity right now between Brian Sharkey and this club, and you know it. Uh, and we can't change that. But we are not in competition with Brian Sharkey. Brian Sharkey sells to the public, he sells to golfers, he sells to all the residents on Grosio that want to stop in his bar. We won't. We can't. We're limited by the liquor laws uh, as a private club to sell to only club members and their guests. And that's what uh, Bob was being flip, but that's what he was talking about earlier. You come down there, you want to buy a drink on our boat, pony up the 290 and become a member, unless one of our and one of our members bring you in as a guest. It's not easy to obtain a liquor license and nobody's going to jeopardize it once they've got it in place. So while I appreciate your concern, Tim, where's it been? We've been working on this for six months. It's changed a little bit, the agreement. We had to go through the township board, through the commission, and we have to air out all their concerns. And, and, and they're definitely concerned. I have to be honest. I had a memo from a board member a couple days oh, ago. Listen, I, I was, I'm, I'm just trying to be honest. I don't no, want to... No, I'm a student of hydrology. I know this stuff flows downhill. Right. Because uh, I'm often on the bottom. But... <laughs> oh, Yes. <laughs> But like nothing has changed, okay? This has been the same proposal from day one. So, and it won't change tomorrow. Uh, what Bob's trying to do is, is juggle flaming torches here in Chainsaws. Uh, we're in contract to purchase this vessel. We're not going to purchase it if we don't have a place to put it. Uh, and... I understand your concern. The guy's got until March 25th uh, to renew his lease on that particular dock, and unless somebody you know talks to him, and, and maybe he decides to get out of boating because he doesn't want to pay five bucks a gallon for his fuel. Uh, uh, Ma'am, you asked me a question earlier uh, with respect to a, a procedural issue on the motion. Uh, and, and I advised you uh, with respect to the amendment to the motion. The amendment being subject to availability uh, will clean the whole thing up. Uh, if the gentleman 
doesn't want to renew his dock lease, there's no issue. Um, so here we are, a member of the public, talking to you about leasing a dock at your marina. That's what we are. And okay, I, I hope that clears things up, and I'll, I'll take any questions from uh, any of the commission. Well, could I speak just for a Yeah, go ahead, Tom. I report to the township manager and ultimately the township board. I receive a, an email from a board member and just listen to some of the points that he makes, and I, I'm responsible to that body. It sets up a situation where the township has joint management of the marina with the boat club. This type of arrangement seldom works out and usually results in constant bickering. The township has many examples where these types of arrangements have failed. This is coming from one of my bosses. It puts the township in competition with the boat club for renting seasonal and transient dock space and use of the marina. That's changed tonight. Yeah, yeah. But see how it's evolving? It's changing sure. all the time. Uh, three, maintenance of the marina becomes a shared responsibility of the private club and the township. It causes confusion for Grozio resident. Is it private club or is it a public marina? The issue of taxes needs to be addressed. Private clubs pay real estate taxes and personal property taxes. Finally, he says the issue of the future expansion of the boat club's facility needs to be addressed. How will the township benefit financially from the boat club's future expansion? Those are things that I got from my boss, and I don't think we have them answered yet tonight. And that's, I'm just trying to be honest. I... I that we, the marina wouldn't be there if it wasn't for the club helping us out. My response, Tim, is this. What expansion is he talking about? It's a boat. Well, I've got to get an answer for him. It's a boat. Hold, hold on. I, yeah, it's more of a member thing, I think, that's yeah. talking right. about. Right. So I'm not trying to remember, be Remember, derogatory. this, your, your club's proposal has changed yes, today mm -hmm. from what it was when you presented it to us at our last uh, study session. Um, so our board members who were present, I think they were Mr. Our trustees were Johnson, Kantz, Van Oss, right. and, you. and me, and uh, they heard that proposal and sent their responses. In the meantime, they've had conversations, and and these are the same kind of questions. I mean, you're getting a heads up. Those are things that are going to be addressed when this recommendation goes to the township board. Um, with with all due respect to what you were saying, but you were essentially making the case that it is not just about a dock. Yes, the motion is about you renting a dock for a boat, which is very cut and dry. But both Bob and you have gone on to tell us about your plans for that clubhouse. Um, you talked about catered events, and you talked about bringing in other clubs, which presumably will be your guests. So, you know, they, they won't be going up to Sharky's, which doesn't matter. It, it's your clubhouse. Um, but it's no longer, you talked about a liquor license for the clubhouse. It's no longer just a dock. When we lease you that dock space, a lot of baggage comes with it. And if Tim doesn't it remind us to address that baggage and he doesn't remind the you know or the township board members don't remind him or vice versa then we run into trouble because those are the kind of questions that we need to be prepared to handle whether or not it's a conflicting lease agreement that we have with another boat owner or a dock user or another restaurant so you know the restaurant essentially has nothing to do with the marina except for the fact that it relies on marina for clientele. I know Brian was a member of your club at one time. I don't know if he still is. Um, the relationship is obviously um, tense. Soured. Soured. So he knows, I'm pretty sure he knows he's not getting you back. But we also made improvements to the restaurant facility and the marina based on a bond agreement that we have and our treasurer I know for a fact is very concerned about losing the tenant whose rent pays for a big part of that bond uh, payment so those are those are concerns that all need to be addressed before we can simply say it's okay to rent a dock space so it, it really isn't anymore about just a dock. It's bigger. It's become bigger than just a dock. The only thing I would say in response to that is, is part of Bob's earlier presentation is we have no intention, no plan, no future whatsoever with respect to the service of food. 
So if any of our members or any of our guests or, or any guest clubs, uh, especially the guest clubs that may choose to come down for a rendezvous for a weekend, uh, basically they bring a boat. They don't have wheels. They're, they're driving U.S. cabs. So the closest place for them to eat is up the hill. Uh, there's really, you know, you, you hungry? You're going to Sharky's. Um, so we're not in competition with Brian's restaurant, and we're not in competition with Brian for alcohol sales. Uh, again, what we're talking about is a private club license. Our members, our members, uh, guests, and maybe somebody comes up from Ford or from Albemarle and uh, wants to stop in and have a drink, they may come to us. They may go to Sharky's. I don't know. But the only people we are open to is other IOYA clubs or similarly situated clubs. All right. S seeing what the West River Yacht Club, Tim said, what our commission said, we really can't vote on anything, really, it seems to me. we got we got to get some questions here. And to me, I think we really got to sit down and, Tim, you're going to have to, I'm, when I say we, I think it's you with Bob, Brian, and Dale or something, because those are going to be the main stakeholders and Uta, obviously, as a board member liaison. But, um, yeah, but if you vote on it, that will bring it, that will push it to a head. I mean, if it doesn't get voted on, it's, my fear is it's going to go on for another month. And we're going to be back here another month, and it's going to go on. We'll have to wait for another month. Well, I mean, we need to bring it to right. Well, we the need to bring it to a head. Well, the reason why I said it out is because it, it, it really, it really dialed down a lot, and, and, it, and I think everyone liked what you what you presented, Bob. I mean, it, it, we everything got dialed down a little bit. <clears throat> no more talk about the word private. You know, it's public. Um, a lot of prop, uh, issues with that. Um, but with Tim's points being, you know, he made some pretty good strong points. Who would tell you this? I'm, I'm sorry, Walt. Um, I, I do sense a solution would be if we had another amendment to the motion to say we agree to lease this, this dock contingent, subject to availability contingent on board approval or contingent to approval of the township board and that sh that shoves the whole thing up to the township board and then the answers have to get um, they have to get in before it gets All the to the questions need to be answered before the board yeah. at least we're kicking the can up and moving forward right yeah so if if they tell us to go ahead and do it subject to availability we'll do it and then we'll let them unfortunately I'm uh, I guess us but we'll let the board um, then make that Decision. Mike, is that acceptable for your motion? Sure, we can we can include subject to contingent upon approval of the Grill Hill Township Board. Yeah, I mean, obviously it will go to the Township Board. What I'm saying is, we're, our approval is based on their approval, and so we're we're really we're just saying if they say go ahead, we say go ahead, and that that gives you maybe the vote that you need. And it gives Tim and the board time to do the research and get the hard questions answered. I, I don't know. That's just my, my yeah, thought Dale, process. The, the response from the township board member was Dale trying to get feedback. I think we need to go back to this. Before it goes up to the township board, I think Dale, Bob, and I need to sit down and look at these different items, sort it out before they have to deal with it at right. the board level because I don't see it, it's going to be hard on them because they're, they'll do the same thing we did, I think. But can, what I'm saying is can we kick it up that way without I, you answering the questions to us, just us kick it up so that you can answer the questions with them? I don't think it's ready to go to the board. Okay. I really don't in my heart. I, I think it, th I see people responding. It's it's not set. I think it needs to go back to Dale, myself, Bob, and whomever. Maybe some of those board members need to sit down. I mean, not telling them what to do, but I, I need Dale's guidance because he saw these coming back through too. And I would hate to give the board something they have to deal with at their level when they deal with so many issues. And not that this isn't important, but it's not settled or it's not, not that it should be totally settled. But I don't know if we have everything packaged right to give to them. Yes, uh, well, but you know, we're asking for at least that one dock. So I mean, what, what you're telling us now is that all the dock holders down there 
now are going to have to have the lease reviewed by the township board? Is that what well, it is? It involves something totally different based on our contract that an individual doc, uh, you know, patron comes in. I'm not an attorney like Norm, but that's really moving it around. I don't know. Go ahead, Bill. But um, you're, you're asking for more than just a dock space. It, it comes with these other contingencies that, you know, if um, – if a guy at another dock here wants to switch <laughs> locations, Tim will still have to go subject to availability. Correct. But I think the, what the township board is going to look at is the big picture. And uh, the big picture is is two parts. It's a club, it's a dock, but it's a clubhouse on a dock. And so the board is going to do its due diligence and get these questions answered. Yeah, I don't want it to die if we can work it out. No, but, but, but if it goes up there, it's not settled. They, can't, to, they lose their you opportunity. You can still prepare before you, if you get our approval to move it forward, then you will have the time right. to answer all those questions before you bring it to a board meeting. I mean, it's not going to be on the board agenda Monday. Right. You know, we, okay. there's no no public uh, notice, there's nothing. Right. So the first public meeting in in um, March, and that gives you two, two and a half weeks to iron out some of these issues right. before the board um, has it. So a lot of those comments that were made and that, that, that Tim was reading, that was based on the proposal that we I, brought to, to I, the end of the last The yeah. whole thing is a different deal I, now. But they don't know that they yet. Know. You brought yeah. that well, to us today. I, I, I understand that. That's why I'm trying <laughs> to push for it. Let's go on it. Who took it? Who brought it? Who <laughs> Make something happen. Okay, Bob. If you don't want it, then go and now we'll right, know no, what to do then. We're not, we're not trying to fight you. You, you seem know. to be fighting for us. Go with me. We go want us to have Okay, it. thanks, Bob. All right, but with Uta's amendment, she just wants us to say we have to support That's it. fine. Moving on. I don't tell the commission what to do. I just gave my, my what I've seen come through. Yeah, but we don't want to put you in a contentious little thing right. here. No, I want to work it out between everybody and make it work and make right. Water's Edge flourish. But I think we need to all work together because if one doesn't work, it's not going to work. That's what I'm trying to tell everybody. But I think the point Walt's trying to make, Tim, is that the right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing because of what they're dealing with is what transpired last month. Right. What we need to do is to move this motion one way or the other and let them deal with what's happening now so they can respond in kind and they can respond with what is there. I don't think we're taking anything out of anybody's negotiating area. Okay, we yeah. just need to do it as I see it. That's okay. just my opinion. It's no, I respect the commission 100%. I'm just giving you my feedback. I'm, I, I'm worried about right, that. I mean, with those assurances, I mean, we're not, this is not a done deal. We're, we're, we get in there with the board approval. So nothing's done. We should not be upsetting any apple carts anywhere because nothing is done. We're just now going into the due diligence and homework of, of a final proposal from the West River Yacht Club. We know what they want, you know, you know specifically. I think we're pretty much happy with what we've heard so far. We can answer questions and get people together, start communicating, and say we won't be stuck on your toes or your toes, stuff like that, right? Mr. Right. Chairman? Okay. Yes. Mr. Chairman, I would like to call for a vote. All right. Do I do need a roll call or can we just vote? Roll call. You want to? <laughs> All right. Let's redo the motion, please, Mr. Swales. Okay. The uh, Community Recreation Commission agrees to lease Dock 210 subject to availability to West River Yacht and Cruising Club for the floating clubhouse. Um, subject, to subject to negotiation of dock lease and services rendered of equal value and this is contingent upon approval of the Gross Hill Township Board. Okay, seconded by Bill. Yep. Okay, Mr. Conroy, how do you vote? No. Ms. O'Connor. Oh, I... I... No. Ms. Yops. 
Mr. Moreau? Yes. Wilbur Bryan? Yes. Mr. Swales? Yes. Catcher? I say yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So I'll work with you, Tim. Right, try to answer those questions if we're not ready for the board and won't go to the board. Okay? No, but I'm fine. If I can, if I can uh, make, make a suggestion, it was very hard in the sense to say no because I, I didn't like the specific wording of the motion. Um, it doesn't give you any options. But when we go to the board, let's keep the motion simple. Well, this is going to go to them in that sense, but keep the facts simple. Make sure that all the questions are ironed out, all the, the answers are ready. And, and by then there will also be public input because this is the first time this has aired to the public. And, and I hope that way we will be ready for a positive vote and to make this happen. But again, just, just because this is such a contentious era in, in the township right now, it's our obligation as trustees and as commissioners to make sure that we address all these issues. And it may take a long time and it may not be fun, but none of us want to do anything that in the end results uh, being done imp improperly or with not enough discussion or not enough consideration. All right. Recreation Director's Report. Tim, you have some maintenance, budget, and report? Yes. Um, well, the biggest thing has been a lot of snow plowing. <laughs> um, and more to come. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. On your uh, desktop there, you have uh, a budget the Township Board will be looking over during the study sessions next week. That's the larger packet. Um, the first page of each section I uh, penned in, the section it was like, um, if you flip the second page, you'll see Water's Edge, WE. And then when you get to the rec, it'll say REC and then uh, farm and festival. And each of those sections lead off of the revenue and then it goes into expense. And you'll see the summary on the very beginning. It's uh, We're going to be submitting a balanced budget, proposed budget, to the board. And um, during these budget hearings, they have a lot of questions. Commissioners are welcome. And I believe it's at 8.15 next Tuesday night if you would like to attend. And then over the weekend, if you guys have any questions on any aspect of the budget, um, give me a call, email me, and I'll try to get you an answer as soon as possible. Um, All right. Um, yeah. How are we doing with, we are down, what, 20000 Tim, from taxes now? How much did it hurt you? Yeah, that dropped uh, a little more than that. I can't remember the, uh, let's see, we were... Well, it was originally 318, and this year it's showing um, around two. That's the first page of the rec. 280 something, I believe. Or yeah, 281.16, and it dropped well over 20,000. I think it was like. 318 last year. And that's just because of the assessments. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, so that that's where you see some of the staff uh, reductions that we're taking on right now. So we've got some struggles ahead. And uh, uh, we've got a very loyal, hardworking staff, good part-time staff that's going to try to get us through this next year. Mr. Chair? Yes, Senator. I guess for the public that is watching on TV or um, sitting here too, um, that may not have the document in front of them. Part of the reason our discussion on that boat slip for a clubhouse was contentious is that the board members also realized that the lease income from the restaurant is worth $40,500 a year. And that's, that's something that they're going to be very careful about putting at risk. And so that's, again, why it's so important for, I think, the board members to, to consider what, what, if any, risk that poses to the restaurant lease, whether it's perceived or not. If the tenant pulls out, we're out $40,500 until right. we find another tenant. 
Well, that whole thing, because it really was, it was growing and then it ended up shrinking. It really did change. It was ever evolving. Is there, is there a concern, is there a true concern that the lease may, that the occupant, the Cherokees may not renew a lease? Well, the, How, no, I, I haven't heard that. But I just heard it a second ago, so I wanted to know if that... Well, that, that's, well that's because the lease um, is going to be ending this summer, correct, isn't it? No, the lease ends at the end of March. End of March. Okay. This next no, month no. is going to be very... We'll know by the end of March. Wow. Correct. Wow. But, but just... I'm just curious... Well, maybe I don't need to know. I'll be just well, we have to keep, I, I guess to put it um, blunt, we, it's just an eventuality we have to keep in our mind. Okay, yeah. It's, it's, right? could, something could happen. Something it's bad could happen. But, and I mean, officially, no one, of course, you wouldn't. You wouldn't officially make a comment if you're a businessman that you might not renew your lease. I mean, no one has told, Tim, no one's come to you and said, I might not renew my lease. No, no. Good. But, Mike, we can't, um, let's just say... When we run the township, it's a, a business and trust to the taxpayers, and we can't assume, as uh, Norm pointed out, you know, too often we're at the the bottom of the hill when the water comes and other stuff comes running down, right? Yeah. So we can't um, we can't not picture the worst case scenario, right? And and I think that's where some of the board questions came from the last time is have we considered the worst case scenario. Um, the other thing is, to be blunt, the, the boat club um, went out and, and sought this clubhouse boat, uh, partly I imagine because of a, a, a spat or a feud with the restaurant. So if it's that emotional, I, you know, you, both parties are probably likely to act emotionally, and I don't want to. I don't want to be the the board member that says, "Oh my God, we just lost um, our our lease, our tenant over there, and now we have to do something else." So it's it's really just being very very careful, and and right recognizing here, if it were just a boat, it would be a no brainer. Uh, and I, uh, my question had nothing to do with the boat or the yeah. club. It was just. Sharkies in general, was was there any reason to think he may not renew his lease? And the answer being, is no. No. Good. We're just being very, very I conscious. certainly hope he does renew his lease because he's needed. Right. And, and no, I don't want you to think that he's made an indication Good. to me or anybody Good. else because that's certainly not <laughs> true. Um, but I, again, as a trustee, we just can't move forward uh, without taking that into consideration. Okay. Tim, I don't have a maintenance update. You, did you? I didn't put it. I was busy with those other reports. Oh, okay. um, uh, two, two maintenance. Uh, the light for the back of the farm that Bill brought up last, uh, or two meetings ago, about lighting the back, we had that installed. And then we had a major uh, pipe break going into the red barn, and um, that was that was fixed. That was a little under $1,500. Was this a regular wow. water line? Yeah. And, um, when the Copper Brothers pulled it out, they showed me both sections of the pipe, and they had little pitted holes in them and it just old pipe that uh, but yeah it was um but they did really nice work for me got over there and took care of it right away and i wanted to thank charlie campo for all the work he did for us it did it do any other damage to the barn at all no no okay. no and it's safe and sound so okay. but he's going to come back and actually put a strap on the, the the water hydrant type of pump and so they can't pour off the wall you know it'll solidify it then he he did that on his own too so i Very really cool. appreciate that so those were the two major besides the you know, keeping things up. Brian was um, working on the uh, ice rink when Carl couldn't get to it because, you know, Carl does snow plowing and things like that. So we tried to do as much as we could to help Carl and the volunteers, but it re that really is a volunteer project, that ice rink. Um, and Mark Tiso uh, works with them a great deal, you know, with the power and the lighting and the water and making sure they have those resources. So it worked, it's working real well with the, the groups working together. Okay. Good. What about the annual report? Um, I emailed that to everyone, and I think I gave Ethel and John both a copy. Mm -hmm. um, Any highlights or anything like that? Oh, lots of things. Um, the great work by the golf subcommittee, the creation of the us working with the, the, sub, the golf uh, Sunday Night Farm subcommittee, working with the equestrian club and the things they bring to the table for the farm. Uh, well, there's a whole bunch of 
items in there that um, we've talked about. You know, the continuation of the, you know, the water's edge, the improvements by the volunteers to keep water's edge and solid financial shape. I mean, it's starting to turn a little bit right now. Um, a quick update on that, and I wanted to give you a quick report on 125. Water's edge was uh, seven in the plus. Now we've dropped to three, negative 3,909 going into the, the last month of the year. Overall between REC, the overall budget for all the departments, um, let me look at this here. Uh, last month we were 46,550 in the hole with not all the millage money in yet. And there's some um, costs or some revenue we're getting back because of work we did with other departments. So it was 46 in the red last month, and now it's 46.55. So we've made up overall 6,000. Cool. So we'll see how the uh, the millage money comes in, and then the, the payback from the other account. And in these times, we're going to be real close. But I'm yeah. I'm proud of the work you guys have done, and how we've tried to make things work. It's like I said, it's very fragile. All the parts that make up the rec department, and, and you, you get into a situation like tonight. Um, it's like working with a golf committee or the subcommittee at the farm. You know, you're the manager, and everybody has these different wants and needs, and um, you're going to make somebody upset. But then again, you got to look out for the welfare of all involved, or at least think you. You know, that's what, being around for so long, and that's why I was getting at that point. The club is just phenomenal down there. Right, and what they do. Tim, and they got to pick me apart on maintenance things. Isn't that your whole career here about getting everyone involved yeah. on the same page? You've but never ever it was really hard tonight to do that, that but I, I, I was just trying to tell you there's concerns and it's not a, a slam dunk type of situation. I, and you don't want to throw somebody into a, a mess without having to go. I think with Dale and I maybe bringing people together, we'll make it cold. Like Uda said, you got to... This will be good, though, because this, like I said, it moves it on the next stage and we can start communicating because now we actually know the, the proposal, Tim. So it'll be good. It'll be good. If it doesn't turn out, we, we try uh, Tim, on your budget, is it a fiscal year? What's your account? Yeah, the budget starts April 1st and ends okay, March so, 31st. So you're talking about like this last month and this month. The year goes through the end of March. Right, we're down to our last month, and that's where you're we sitting at. You're neck and neck. Neck and neck. neck. I mean, okay. it, it might be a little on the but right. You don't have yeah. much. I mean, you got revenue coming. You said township taxes. Right. We don't have golf or much going on right no, now. We changed all that stuff before because it used to go calendar year. Okay. We messed okay. up the budget Thank years. You. So we're all going by budget years now. Good. So when, when Tim says about 8.15 on Tuesday for our budget board meeting, because yeah. we'll be presenting the budget to the board, look at the questions with Tim and stuff, and, and like that before they approve it in front of a board meeting for all the different uh, uh, budgets. For yeah, and the budget you have is in their packet. Okay. And you need to see that, and you're um, more than welcome and encouraged to come to those study sessions. But if you have questions prior to our meeting Tuesday night with the board, I'll be more than happy to answer that. And then if you're at the meeting, you'll understand where I'm coming from yep. or why I recommended it go that, that direction on that item. All right, so does your subcommittee chairs look at your departments and stuff like that? Yep. If you have any questions, get with Tim. Definitely. Any other questions about any of the reports? Yep. Oh, a couple of them there. John. Yeah. Uh, Tim, the, the five-year plan um, revisions that were made, uh, are, are those highlighted uh, anyway so, that we, so we know what the revisions are or we know what the, what the changes are? Well, the packet to the board, and I probably should have put that on um, your, let's see, yeah, we're talking Andrew Crowe's <laughs> or master plan. Yeah. Um, please see attached memo. To the township board focusing on the history, purpose, and need. Plan revisions based on the input from the public hearing. All three sub areas airport, water's edge, centennial farm note conceptual on each plan. Airport park plan, um, update plan, and text of the hill as year round amenity, not just sled hill. Water's edge note basketball cars uses ice rink, amend parking area near driving range. Centennial farm use most recently revised plan. Corrections to animal shelter, rose garden, paddock areas. And you'll see that reflect, and it'll come out Monday night. If there's still something wrong, we we could change it with the board, um, or not not wrong, but you know we're still concerned. DPS, uh, let me see what I put. Oh, DPS, public uh, after a planning meeting or a department of public service, consider expanding focus of bike path subcommittee by creating multidisciplinary bicycle pedestrian committee. That was something. Okay. 
that was important to the planning commission. And, um, but you, it's not highlighted. The change. No, that's why. Right. right. That's but that's what those. So, so maybe you can give, yeah. give in the minutes you would have seen. Can you put? Um, I don't know if it's possible, but when the, the plan is online, can we put that extra document online with it yes. so that yep. people know where the revisions occur? You can see the actual separation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That, okay. Uh, Definitely. Um, all right. Do you have a question on too? Right. Oh, I'm he the, oh okay, John. Uh, Bill probably knows this. I maybe I should know too. But the difference between 2009 golf rounds and 2010. What was what was the, the difference? Less golfers. Well, I mean, <laughs> I mean the number of rounds. What I'm trying to get to is uh, what was the difference in the number of rounds? Report, I yeah. Oh, yeah, it was oh, 370 in something, right? Are you asking why or what? No, no, no. I'm just asking the actual number. What, uh, what oh, was the? Two minutes. I don't have that. Okay. Do you get a copy of the end report from your yeah. year pack? I have no. Yeah. It's 379 the was the difference. Oh, okay. The number of nine 379 is the difference. 379? Yes. To the back. Okay. To the negative? From yeah. nine to, to ten to, to down. Less less and that is not uncommon to the trend across the country. I've been handing those annual re It's down like uh, 7%, I think, in our region. Round. Okay. All right. Uta, you have a question? Yeah. I, um, actually, now I've practically forgot it. Um, no. Not at all. Yeah. It's gone. Can I come, if, when I remember it, um, come back? I'm never going to come back. Will you? Uh, I, I wanted to say something um, to kind of back up Tim a little bit with the uh, with the marina thing. And I know our, our marina friends are gone. I don't think the vote tonight reflected that... Uh, Necessarily, that we we were against this project, but that we had um, discussions about the broader pictures of how all this would work out. And when you uh, look at our when you look at our budget, you see that how tight all our margins are for each each area of the township, where the the revenues are coming in, where they're shrinking, where they're growing, and uh, so. Those are all the kind of things that I think we count on Tim keeping a big picture on. And so when he gives us kind of a heads up, let's be careful here, um, I think when we look at our budget document, that's when you see why he's, he's concerned about keeping all these different things in balance. But that's, um, that's not the question I had, but I'll try to remember. Okay. I got involved in what John was saying. It was, oh, no. <laughs> All right, Tim, you got any, uh, anything more of your reports? Well, the, the, one of the big things in the annual report is that 17-month process, the master plan that we've gone through in the meetings. And then things like um, the youth representative was a new thing. John, yep. good work. John. Thank you. Uh, um, Leah's tremendous work with the Open Space and Greenways yeah. Committee. Um, mentioned, you know, where she went out with Cliff, did a lot of the background on the non you know, the, what am I thinking, non motorized access. That took a lot of time and effort, traipsing through all these woods and wetlands. A lot of properties. Ethel with the seniors, Bill with the subcommittee. It's right on down the line. Helena with the farm, forming that committee. Um, those are all in there. You know, it's just the community working together. It takes a lot of time, but you got to listen to everybody and try to work through these. And that's it. What I was trying to say earlier tonight, and I, you know, I'm gonna walk over tonight, and I just I feel like I'm gonna let those people down. No, but, you didn't. But you either. have to, you just have to look at all the different things because it's there's problems up ahead. <clears throat> all right, all set then. Any old business? Any new business? All right, let's move on down to the subcommittee updates. Bill Morrow, I got a call committee update. Anything to let us know? Well, I. Should turn my mic on. Um, I'm happy to report, and I think I said this earlier, that the golf course is in excellent condition when we shut it down this year uh, due to the volunteers and due to that new piece of equipment we got. We would have liked to have had a bigger machine, but the machine served itself well. Uh, I can assure you that this year we're not going to lose any days uh, uh, getting the golf course open for business this year. Uh, we're ready to go. We, we did a great job in getting uh, the volunteers, I should say, got a gr did a great job in getting the course prepared for spring, and we are prepared. The only thing we may have, because of some of the high winds, some branches and, and, and uh, sticks to pick up, which we will do, 
And the nice thing about that, the small stakes we don't have to worry about now because the new lawnmower is going to hack it down and, and take care of it. So it's only the big stuff we can move. We'll probably have that done in a day. So we're ready to go. Uh, we've had meetings with Tim and the golf committee. Uh, we have a real good plan in place, we think. Uh, as you can see in the newspaper and on cable, we've got our uh, pricing Rates. worked out. Yeah. And uh, so we're going to go ahead with that. And uh, the best news of all is Carl Roush, Bill Carter, and myself had a meeting with Ann Dysnick, and uh, we had a very, very nice, I can't say a real long meeting, we had a very nice meeting and as we come to March 31st, we're going to find out this year that the golf course, just the golf course, made money this year. Wow. <laughs> so we're very happy to report that, even with some of the uh, 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 playing rounds of play going down. And Tim and I and the committee have worked up some very uh, uh, exciting weekend things to get weekend golf play up. <coughs> And we've also, I noticed, uh, we have a couple of new golf leagues. And incidentally, to the general public, if you look at the golf leagues or call the, uh, the Water's Edge, they, they, I can assure you that most of the golf leagues still have openings. And uh, we'd love to have you join us. And the course is going to be that much better than it was that last year. So thank you very much to the volunteers and to the public for supporting us. All right, thank you, Bill. Mm -hmm. Mike, Marina, update? Anything? No, I just want to say that I will work as the sub, as the sub, as the chair of the committee to work with the club and Tim and everybody. I think they're going to bring a lot more revenue to the marina. We're going to. I'll work hard to bring more boats. The club's going to bring more boats. I think they I think that Brian's going to get a lot of more business from all these people coming down here. There might be a few bruised egos, but I'm going to work hard to bring them back together because we those people need to eat, and Brian feeds them. And uh, there was just a little dust up; it wasn't little, but we can fix it. Good. We can fix it. All right. That's nice to hear. Yeah. That is good to hear. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, uh, Centennial Farm. Hell yeah. Um, Very important. Right? Right. No, uh, oh, he's not here. He's not here. Oh, all yeah. right. It's covered in snow. The airport's covered in snow? Yeah. Oh. Airport um, our subcommittee is um, still in an infant stage. Um, uh, we have had two meetings, and through communication with the majority of the groups at the Centennial Farm location, we're developing a camaraderie towards the goal of cooperation. We uh, aim to foster the sense of community and pride of the Centennial Farm for all the Grosseal residents. Uh, we've discussed traffic flows, safety and security issues. We are implementing a directory and mapping plans so people can know how to call, people that come to the farm know how to reach places and people. Um, it's going to be simple, but uh, we're in the middle of implementing it. We um, will establish an operations plan with semi-annual on-site visits that will aid us in ongoing maintenance and repair of the farm. We've already had a few new programs, including the Grosse Equestrian Club. Um, the new programs are in place, and we have a few more in the works. I would like to, um, this is all baby steps, we're all new. So the idea is to form a real good camaraderie so we can have at least the committee and the people on the island, or on the farm, involved in the farm, pull together and we get a lot more volunteer where we take care of each other. Give me time. <laughs> Fair enough. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Senior citizens, <clears throat> Ethel, anything? <sighs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, let's go, Yops. <laughs> I just wanted to. <laughs> no, he's got that mic. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we had a very successful seminar on elder law presented by Katie Graham of the Elder Law and Advocacy Center. 
This is a program that's free to seniors who need help in planning wills and trusts and powers of attorney, et cetera, and these are all legal services. Yeah. And the Gross Hill Writing Club members of the Senior Citizens Club presented a program called A Three-Course Meal to illustrate some of their creative writings. And we continue to collect non-perishable foods and other needs for the Sacred Heart Food Bank. And we've given monetary contributions to the Good Fellows, the EMS, and the Gross Hill Historical Society. And I also would like to thank T Ted Fournier for his help in posting meetings and events on the Gross Hill uh, Cable. I also would like to say that uh, the next Recreation Department sponsored celebration with a great meal and music and prizes is the St. Patrick's Party at the farm on March the 16th. All right. Let's go. Okay, thank you, Ethel. And the schools, Conroy and Agron? Yeah, got any, uh, I'm going to turn my time over to Agra and let him speak about uh, what is going on with, with the schools. The uh, school. I showed uh, a bunch of my classmates the plans that you all are working on here. The vast majority of them were all thrilled. And uh, what I'd like to say is if any of you ever need any volunteers whatsoever, feel free to ask me and I can rustle up a couple people. I don't mind volunteering when I have the time. That's all I have to say. Thank you. That's pretty big words there, so. Good. I think the Island Fest Commission might be interested. Hey, 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 let's well. go to Tim first here. Uh, I am. Are we a party yeah. island? <laughs> all right, with that being said, Utah. Yes. Oh, I still got it. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, here goes John. John again. No, I'm on. You can't pass the baton and take it back. Yeah, I know, that's, right. that's true, too. <laughs> I want to I, I thank Agron also for. for doing what he's done uh I, we're going to get more participation and more programs and more yeah. people involved and that's a good thing mm -hmm. uh i wanted to say to helena and pages in the audience um the uh, the programs that have happened with the horse handlers uh groups were very well attended and th those uh programs are really a good a great thing and uh, are bringing more people out to the farm to see what kind of uh, what what the horses do and what is entailed in there, and I'm a huge believer in in the uh, way that uh, horses uh, that kids get a chance to groom horses, learn how to ride horses, get more confidence, and there's a lot of great things for kids uh, to be gained from uh, being part of a horse uh, operation. So yeah. that's it. All right, thanks, John. Yeah. Okay, Uta, you got any comments? Okay, yes, I do. Um, well, just kind of riffing off of John. Um, and it's something that, that Paige and I discussed, too. It, it's exciting to hear that they had an event at the farm. And another reminder, again, to, to Rob and the Lutons to document uh, the attendance that they had, you know, the, the number of people, so that, again, that's something that we can go back to and say this is another point of access that the public had to the farm. Um, I wanted to point out earlier that the budget documents that we've all been looking at here are available to the public um, and you can get those uh, at Township Hall or request them from Township Hall. Um, the, the entire board will be um, discussing the budget on that night, I think Thursday, uh, Tuesday, um, March 1st. And I think the more people look at our actual budget documents, they'll see um, you know, that these numbers have sources and uh, why we sometimes get uh, a little bit tense about uh, the revenues and the expenses. Um, the rec budget, Tim, if I'm not mistaken, is, is solely supported by millage. Well, we have fees and charges. We And, and, and fees and charges, right. that's right. Yeah. But it doesn't draw from the general fund. It does... Uh, Correct. Right. The majority of it is... The, taxes. the majority of it comes directly from the rec millage. Yeah, when, when the merger with Waters Edge, there was some of that general fund to, for the DAP, but the right. recreation millage rec department yes. previous was, yes, definitely. Exactly. Okay, and then um, the last thing I want to say is just in regards to the master plan, the township board will be discussing it and uh, hopefully voting to approve it or to forward it on um, Monday the 28th. Um, just another reminder, because <clears throat> this can't be said often enough, is that it is a conceptual plan. It does not appropriate or allocate any funds, um, and it doesn't approve any projects. 
Um, anything that's in the plan is strictly a, in proposal. It's a guideline for where we want to see our community go, but everything is still subject to the review and the approval by the public and by the different township uh, boards and, and trustees and so forth. So really it's, it's a map and it can be changed uh, as, as you see, as the board sees fit, as the community sees fit. Um, and that's surprisingly it. Okay, thank you. Extended public comment. Anybody from the public want to say anything? <laughs> okay, individual <laughs> commissioner comments. Anything extra? Tim. If you notice in the annual report, um, the equestrian center numbers are a little bit different this year. You'll notice the winter sessions are in there, walkthroughs, the impact of the public going through. So um, Rob did a nice job on documenting and getting that to Annette. Uh, Annette did an excellent job putting the, the numbers together again this year, too, like she does. Appreciate okay. it. Any other individual comments? John? Um, I don't know. Uh, ping pong is still going on, guys. Uh, Wednesday <laughs> afternoons and Friday evenings. Uh, I could use some more uh, people down there. Come on down. Have some fun. Also, um, we have a, a chili brownie cook-off this Saturday night at the VFW with, you know, the KFC is, is, is in that, involved with that. And the following week, there's one at Sharky's. There's a chili cook-off at, at Sharky's. Uh, what else? I think that's it. Thank you. Any other announcements? Anyone else? May I? I just go ahead. Up the way <laughs> I just wanted to say that I'm really not opposed to this uh, boat club. I just think we need more study on the and for everybody that's concerned on the new proposals that they made. And I think the new concessions are great. But I'd also like to thank everybody that's worked on this process of the five-year plan. The master plan has taken so many hours. I think everybody mm. needs to have a great big thank you for all their work. And Tim, I think you did an excellent job on the annual report. I read through the whole thing. It's wonderful. Wow. It's very thorough and very concise. And one more thing. People keep saying that they don't know in the public what's going on with the rec department and what they're doing. I'd like them to please keep their channels. They come out twice a year. It has everything in there that's going on, and they can use it for reference. Thank you. Bill, you want to say something? Uh, just one quick thing. Uh, if anybody in the community would like to volunteer on the golf course this year, we can use your help. And uh, we always have a lot of fun doing it. So contact the uh, uh, Water's Edge office and uh, list your name and number, and we'll certainly get a hold of you and find something you'd like <laughs> to do. Uh, there's easy jobs, and there's jobs that are a little uh, harder than easy. <laughs> but we'd love to have you. All right. Thanks, Bill. Anyone else? All right, my, my thing is, Tim, we're going to take your mantra. We'll get everyone together, communicate yeah. stuff before we move forward. We want to make everybody happy, okay? So that's what we're going to do. With that, I need a motion to adjourn, please. So moved. Second. Second. Mike, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Good evening, everybody. <laughs>